So every once in a while, YouTube will recommend me a video that actually slaps. And I'm like, okay, all right, I guess the algorithm can continue spying on me. It seems to be working some of the time. So I wanted to share this video with you because it's freaking hilarious for one, but it's also kind of interesting. It's basically an episode from a really old TV series called The Computer Chronicles that started in like the 1980s and I think ran all the way till around 2002, which I never really watched growing up, uh, but I knew about it vaguely. And this episode specifically is from 1993 and it's called buying a new computer. So I thought it'd be absolutely hysterical to see how far things have come, what's changed since then. It's been a good almost 30 years since this was filmed. And I thought it would also be interesting to see what stayed the same, what things haven't changed. Uh, so I'm just gonna give some commentary. It's just gonna be a stupid react video. Hopefully you guys will get a kick out of it. There are definitely some uh, really amusing parts here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play it and we'll jump right in. Today's video is brought to you by Slick Deals and their super awesome browser extension. Not only is the extension completely free, guys, but it automatically finds you the best deals on your favorite retail sites to save you the most money possible. And all the deals that it shows you are actually curated by the Slick Deals community, so you only see offers that have been upvoted by other shoppers like you. You go to a retailer's website, click the Slick Deals icon, and bam, you're in Deal City. Population deals. I didn't really know what to expect the very first time I used it, but literally within seconds, I was finding all kinds of offers. Like there was a B550 motherboard for 30% off or something like that, where I was like, I, okay, I don't need that, but that's a really good deal. The extension also finds you any site related coupons you otherwise might not have seen. And it lets you create deal alerts with email and mobile push notifications. I mean, with Black Friday and the holidays right around the corner, this is like the perfect tool to catch all the deals without doing any of the legwork. About 20 million people will be using Slick Deals to help them save money while shopping. So again, it's completely free and saves you money on stuff like computer hardware. Need I continue? If you like saving money, which is a dumb thing to say because who doesn't, click on the link in the description below to start using the Slick Deals browser extension today. Show 1111. Oh my god, I forgot it had the countdown. It's awesome that YouTube has these full episodes online. So you finally decided to buy a new computer. You go down to your local computer store and what do you find? A zillion choices. How do you decide what to buy? Should it be a Macintosh or a PC? If it's a PC, what brand of PC? And what kind of display? How much memory? How big a hard drive? Should you get a CD-ROM? And on and on and on. Today we'll okay, help you. So pretty much all those questions are still relevant today, except for the CD-ROM one, probably. Most people aren't putting that at the forefront of their mind when buying a new PC. Some people might, but it's more of a niche audience nowadays. There are still a zillion options when it comes to PC hardware and various pre-built desktops, I suppose is what they're talking about here, that you can choose from. And also choosing between Mac or PC, that pretty much hasn't changed either. Those are still the two options that primarily dominate the entire market. Obviously, there are some third-party alternatives out there, but so far, this is all looking and sounding pretty familiar. To answer those questions as we bring together a group of experts to give you advice on how to buy a new computer yes. on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Experts, give me all the experts. Whoa, graphics. What kind of supercomputer did you need to render that? My God, that's beautiful. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by <laughs> Intel, microprocessor <laughs> technology for the oh that logo. Back when Intel's font was still Comic Sans or... <laughs> thing is provided by oh, the yes. Software Publishers Association. Say it. Providers of educational Say materials it. to help manage software. Say it! Don't copy that floppy. Yes! And by Hewlett Packard. Personal computer don't, division. Don't copy that floppy. We need, a, we need an updated phrase for, for modern times. Don't torrent. It's abhorrent. Hewlett Packard. HP, still kicking. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me today is Andy Reinhardt, West Coast Bureau Chief for Byte Magazine. Andy, we have two computers here, an IBM PC compatible. This is an HP Vectra, a Macintosh Centris over here. They both look pretty much alike. The question I get from someone who's buying a new computer, what should I buy, a Macintosh or a PC? How do you answer that question? Easy. I get asked this question all the time. PC. It used to be easier PC. because the Mac was quite a bit more expensive than the PC, so it was partly a question of what you could afford. Yeah. But now the prices on Macs have come down so much that that's really not an issue. Um, <laughs> that did not age well. What you're going to do with the system is often a point that I suggest to people, but in fact, the applications are about the same yeah. for both the systems. So I really think what it comes down to that's is true. how much computer expertise you have going into it. 
And if you're willing to get in there and roll up your sleeves and kind of get to know the system really well, you can still get some better deals on PCs. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are harder to use. You have to mess around with autoexec bat and config sys files and dip switches and <laughs> jumpers and IRQs and that sort of thing. <laughs> Which you don't have to deal with at all anymore. So even less of a reason to go with Mac if uh, user friendliness is a big concern. I think with the Mac, Basically, everything works out of the box. Now, of course, they're trying to correct that with the PC, with the plug and play initiative, but that's not going to They did. Until they fixed it. You want to depend on you kind can of sleep what at machines night. your friends have or what you have at work? Yeah, I actually think that's an excellent point. I think a lot of times, if you know people who are using one platform or another, they're going to be able to help you out, provide yeah. you some hand holding, you know, teach you about the software. Okay. Today, we will help you pick a new computer, whether you decide on a Mac or a PC. Now, for many of you who already own a desktop computer, your big decision is what kind of notebook computer to buy now. And to help you, we're going to visit a CompUSA store with an expert to Comp find out USA. what's the best deal in a notebook computer. Haven't heard that name in ages. There's so many notebook computers on the market. Whoa. How do you determine what's the best one for you? Owen Lenderholm, senior editor of PC World magazine, says choosing a 486 processor laptops. now may save you money in the long run. Prices have dropped so fast on them all the time that you're, be you're best off deciding what you can afford now. Um, and buying the best notebook you can for that amount of money. That way it'll last a bit longer. Shop at the low end, it just means it'll be obsolete all that much quicker. That's some pretty universal advice, I think. Pretty timeless. Different models have different kinds of input devices. The most wow. common is a trackball mouse that clips onto the side of the that unit. Looks so uncomfortable. But it's best to try several different ones. No wonder all of our parents have arthritis and carpal tunnel. Battery range is another important feature to consider. Battery lives range from about three to six hours. Um, you can typically expect to get what the, the lower end of what a manufacturer claims. So if they say three to five hours, you can expect three. If they say four to six, you can expect four. Shady um, manufacturers, man. Don't count on any more than that because the chances are you won't get it. If you need more than that, buy a spare battery, keep it charged up, and then just swap it in when... Just when... hot swap your laptop battery. Everyone's doing it. So yeah, I mean, battery life was pretty abysmal back then, especially considering just what the computers could do. But I mean, for a laptop back then in 1993, you probably couldn't spend more than three hours on one anyway without being like, well, I've done everything this device is capable of doing, and now I'm going to go outside. The internet doesn't exist yet, so there's still a reason to see the sun. What you want your notebook computer to do should determine how much money you spend. Prices range That's from true. one to five thousand dollars. <laughs> At the 1,000 then, we're talking a 386, two megabytes what of RAM. What do you even get for a $5,000 laptop today? Like, that's just insane. And then it starts, they start at $1,000. I mean, nowadays, a $1,000 laptop is like a solid, it's like a solid laptop. That's a good mid-range option that can do a lot. Uh, but back then, it was like $1,000. And back then, $1,000 was closer to like between 1,500 and 2,000, I would think. Let me see what the specs are. Let's see what the specs are on a $1,000 laptop. Prices range from one to five thousand dollars. At the one thousand end, we're talking a three eighty six, two megabytes of RAM, sixty meg megabyte hard drive. Uh, pretty low end. Did he say s two megabytes of RAM? Wow. Computer screen will be monochrome. You'll get a monochrome. floppy drive. You don't even Not get much color. else, but you'll get in that. The high end, a five thousand uh, dollar laptop. You're talking about one with an active matrix color screen, color. really sharp and clear. A DX two fifty or a DX two sixty six processor. Lots of memory, lots of hard drive space. Maybe even as much as two hundred megabytes. This is a which should write. So not only do you get the full color screen for $5,000, you also get a large capacity hard drive as much as 200 megabytes. That's like, how many music CDs is that? It's like at least a third of one. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. Thanks, Janelle. Look at that, back when they still hyphenated the word online. <laughs> These graphics and music are everything. If you're thinking about buying an IBM PC compatible desktop computer, you have lots of decisions to make. Here to help you are Lisa Bio, author of this book, How to Use Your Computer. Also with us over there, Wendy Taylor, senior editor with PC Computing and co-author of the Streetwise Guide to PCs. You can just see her haircut and instantly know what kind of PC she had. Look over here, Lisa, how to use your computer before you can get to use it. You've got to buy it. I want to ask you about how to use your computer. Kind of basic rule about buying a new PC. Before Google, they had books. Well, really, there's two issues to consider. There's what you're actually going to buy, and there's who you're going to buy it from. Yeah. I kind of want to start with the second. I think. One of the most important things, especially for people who are buying their first PCs, is you don't want to prioritize price too much. I mean, price is important. What you're really looking for is a store that has 
a good reputation and particularly a good reputation for service and support. You don't want the PC to break a week later and they don't remember your name. Or even if you can't figure something out, you want to be able to call somebody That's and say, right. help, how do I do this? That's right. Okay, so price isn't everything. Price is not Okay, what about price what? Price isn't everything? I mean, it is if you're on a budget, like a normal person. Like, not everyone can afford to shop at Sears, lady. Um, at this point, if I were buying a new PC, I would buy a 486. That's so a 486, not a 386. That's right. If you're buying a used PC, you might consider a 386. But a new computer, I'd buy a 486. Okay, what kind of 486? There's lots of different processors you can get. It really depends on what you're trying to do. If you're, all you're doing is word processing, an SX may be sufficient. If you're doing a lot of different applications at once, and you're running Windows, and you're using databases or graphics, mm -hmm. you're probably going to want a DX or DX2. Okay. Okay, so you go for 486. How about the memory question? Two megs of RAM, four, eight, 16. How do you know what you need and how much you should spend? Again, on it? it depends on what you're doing. Um, if you're going to be using Windows, and almost all of us are going to have to be using Windows whether we want to or not, right. you're going to want at least four megabytes. Don't let them sell you a two megabyte machine for Windows. So that's your absolute minimum, and that would really be for basically word processing and not a lot more. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be doing database applications, for example, under Windows, you're really talking eight megs at a wow. minimum. 16's nice. Eight would be a minimum. All right, let's. Wow. I mean, it's kind of crazy too that we're still sort of debating even today when it comes to system memory. Do we go four, eight, or 16? Just like they were back then, but now it's gigabytes, whereas back then it was megabytes. We're literally talking about a thousand times more capacity. Let's take a look at an example. We have a PC compatible over here running Windows. Uh -huh. And maybe you should move your mouse or whatever so we can get something up on the screen. Show me what happens if you don't have enough memory in your machine. Well, let me just show you what we're running at the moment. We've got Paradox for Windows. Windows, which is the database application. We've got WordPerfect, Solitaire, uh, and Excel all <laughs> happening. For further, further memory stress test, they've got Solitaire. Hold on. Not Solitaire. Step aside, crisis. Colored rectangles are being rendered. They're okay, all in so memory. we're running five things here. Right. And what happens now? Now, this is an 8 meg machine, right? This is an 8 meg machine, which is eight borderline for all this stuff RAM. at once, and for, especially for database stuff. So here we are, and I'm going to so open. We're going to launch a file, and we wait. And this is, this is because it's a database application and there's too little memory and too mm -hmm. much going on. I mean, it would be the same issue in Access or other database applications. This just really is very borderline. So wait, 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 Jeez. access, 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 and right. that's because not enough RAM. That's right. And dependent. Oh my gosh. I mean, thank God Google Chrome didn't exist back then. Just saying the words Google Chrome would make the computer explode. CPU also. That's right. All right, you've got two keyboards here. Let me ask you about this. A lot of people don't even think about touching the keyboard when they buy their PC, but that's pretty important, isn't it? That's what you touch. It, you know, it's funny. It seems trivial, <laughs> but it makes a really big difference in how happy you're going to be with and the What computer. would the difference be in these two keyboards you have here? Well, a lot of the difference is touch and sound. So this is a more standard keyboard. It's sort of softer touch, it's not kind a big click. A little mushy and uh -huh. soft, and ah. it doesn't make a lot of noise. This And this is fairly standard now. This is more. Uh, this is a lot like the original IBM PC keyboard. Yeah. It tends Ooh. to be noisier and um, a little stiffer, and it makes a click when you press the keys. The thing Mechanical. that's nice about that um, is you can really tell when the keys are pressed. Yeah. It's, it's not a question in your mind. So tactile. It's, it's nice to know that they, they hated membrane keyboards back then too. It's also a good reminder that mechanical keyboards have been around a lot longer than a lot of people think. Moving over from typewriters, mm -hmm. often like this feel. <laughs> he is <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> See, on an Amazon product page for a mechanical keyboard. Great for people coming from typewriters. Do I feel young? Try out the keyboard. That's and old at That's the same right. time. Try typing. Yeah. Lastly, real quickly, what about the display? How much money should you spend? Do you need SVGA? Do you need a real classy display, a fast video card, so on? Again, it depends on what you're doing. I think Super VGA would be a good place Super to start. Super VGA. Um, you want to see the monitor running your application. You don't want to see it displaying beautiful photographs. If you want to see it. Tech, that's yeah. right. You want to see it doing what you're going to be doing. If not exactly your program than an equivalent. Okay, Lisa, thank you very much. I'm going to go over here and join Wendy. And Wendy, I guess if you're thinking about buying a new PC, <laughs> wait, even if you're upgrading wait, hold on. to... <laughs> I like how the lady just stares off into space, doing nothing while he goes to talk to this chick. Just standing there, waiting for Solitaire to load. Okay, we're talking about multimedia PCs, and you have an example of a new multimedia PC one might have bought here with lots... Wow. Back then, not all PCs were necessarily capable of multimedia features. That's something to remember. It's mm -hmm. a goodies in it. Tell me what's in here, and how important is multimedia? That's the big buzzword. Oh. Do it's not going need anywhere. To get a multimedia PC? It's a, it's a dead, well, it depends it's on whether you medium. need your uh, system to bark at you, I guess. <laughs> okay. But this one, for example, has a sound card in it. It's got speakers. Ooh, right. It's got a wow. CD-ROM drive. Wow. It's also got a video MPEG playback board it can play from Sigma video? Designs. Um, <gasps> what is that? That's it plays back movies, 30 mm -hmm. frames per second, full screen. What? It, it plays movies, 30 FPS, full screen in glorious 480p. 
I looked it up. That's actually the maximum resolution of Super VGA at the time. So without that board, you might not be able to show us an example. I mean, run a, a video for Windows Movie here, so we'll see what you're Let's talking about. Let's see it. About. Let's see the goods. Give us the, the hot movie. demo. Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer, the fantasy adventure. Well, where that's you pretty impressive stuff. I mean, that's that full screen movie impressive video, guys. good sound, etc. Exactly. Now, Mind blown. That's not automatically going to come with my PC because that's somebody not says it's multimedia. That's a bonus. Not at all. In fact, <laughs> most multimedia PCs come with merely a sound card and CD-ROM drive. Once you get into to nice speakers that actually sound good, you're adding another $500 to the price. Mm -hmm. Peg decompression board, you're adding another four or $500. So total, it's another $1,000. Oh. So I'm think about talking. whether that yeah. 1000 bucks is really going to... To play Dragon Slayer, worth it. Games, it's probably not worth it. Huh? Exactly. Okay, thank you, Wendy. For many computer shoppers, the easiest way to buy a new PC is by mail order, either directly from the manufacturer or through one of the many mail order dealers. Mail you order. You can buy a computer assembled to your specifications and loaded with your choice of software just by picking up the phone. Direct buying houses like this one, PCs Complete, carry a wide variety of brand name computers Toshiba! at lower than retail prices. Marty Jerome, senior editor of PC Computing, says you should think of a direct vendor's advertisement as its storefront. You should look for the fine print. Almost every direct vendor will have some fine print in their ads. And this shouldn't deter you in itself. All vendors have to have disclaimers. But things to look for that are unfair are restocking fees, which can be 15 to 20 percent. Uh, clauses that say no money back, no refunds. All purchases are final. There's... <laughs> what, he's describing a Craigslist ad? Sounds shady enough. Subtle language like this that can take you to the cleaners. Many direct vendors... Can, take, can really take you to the cleaners. That What an old-timey sounding phrase. I'm gonna start integrating that. That RTX 3080 really took me to the cleaners. Vendors offer complete service and technical support on everything they sell. Uh, tech support, Joel speaking, may I help you? Direct merchants hey, often Joel. have highly knowledgeable sales reps, but before you make your deal, you should know exactly what you want in terms of components, power, and price. Boom. PC Computing publishes a spec watch to help you sort it all out. We've listed all the specs that you should look for and grill your salesperson about before you buy. Grill your example, salesperson about it. Many of us know that we want a, a 13 millisecond hard drive. Who doesn't? But do you know that you want full height or half height or that it needs to have self-parking heads and diagnostic software should be included? What are all these moving parts he's talking about? We've tried to Nonsense. list all these issues, including some red flags, things to watch out for and that you can get charged extra for. Never pay cash for a direct mail purchase. Credit oh. cards are safer. And if there's something wrong with your computer when it arrives, don't wait. Return it immediately for replacement or a refund. The onus is on you to get satisfaction and sometimes this requires two or three phone calls in when there's a discrepancy in a bill. As long as you're persistent, you can usually get satisfaction. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Patterson. Thanks, Janelle. This freaking ad <laughs> they keep showing. Suppose your heart is set on a new Macintosh computer. Oh, that we're talking about Macs be now. confusing too. Here to help us out on the Mac side are Rick Mishlevsky, executive editor with Mac User Magazine. Hold on. And also over the Hold on. Is that not Gabe Newell's evil twin? That is, that is the evil twin of Lord Gaben. I swear, it, this is like the antithesis of Gabe. This guy hates video games. That's why he's on a Mac. <laughs> I, I gotta admit though, this guy is way more fit. All right, so sorry, Gabe. Maybe you should have spent the last 30 years at a standing desk like your bro. The good news is the prices keep on coming down. The bad news is they keep on changing the names of the models so we don't know what Mac is doing what. Oh, so no. Kind of quickly run us through the whole Macintosh line here. First of all, I want to say that you'd never see a lineup like this in a computer store again because Apple has decided to break its line into four different groups. It has the education line, the home line, the business line, and the mobile line. We have representatives of each here. There's a Performa here from the home line, mm -hmm. an LC3 from the education line. Over here we have some Centruses, now Quadras, you're right, they are changing the names, mm -hmm. from the business line, as well as a Quadra also from the business line, and PowerBook from the mobile line. All right, let's take these one at a time. This is the low end here, the Performa now, right? Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, what's the price range here, and what what's the, the right end user here for this? The right end user is someone who's buying their first computer Mario! or bringing a computer let's home and doesn't want to worry about it at all. Performa, you take it out of the box, there's a large set of instructions, you plug it in, the software is already installed, the modem software is all installed, plug it into your phone line, plug game? it into your keyboard, and you're off and running. Computer for a dummy, turn it on, you don't have to know anything. Computer a for a dummy. 
how much this guy max max are for dummies that his words not mine you guys can flame him in the comments all right how about the biggie over here we've got this big quadra 840 and why would you want that one this the is the biggie. 840 av besides being the big most boy. powerful one currently wow, it's also the most versatile look at those and speakers the, have, as you can see a microphone on top of the monitor and speakers at the bottom of the monitor this is a true multimedia machine in that it'll understand what you're saying perform your commands read things back to you you can hook your phone up upcoming software is going to allow you to use this as an answering machine those speakers probably slap they're chunky I, i'd like to hear some some sounds of doom coming out of that thing og doom because i think doom released around the same time as, as this video more or less this is also a mac so i don't know if Macs could play doom OG Doom back then. Getting off topic. CD-ROM built in. You have lots of processor space. I mean, you have lots of RAM space. It's it's a machine for quite a few years. Top of the end, how much money for this quadro? Top of the end, if you want a list price around four thousand, okay. but of course you can go below that. All right. Lastly, a couple seconds left. Let's talk about the good old PowerBook here, and everybody's running around with these. What's the good old PowerBook? Power this, book? this particular one is a 270C, which is your Active Matrix 32,000 color oh my God. Uh, Duo machine. It's called a Duo because <laughs> the it bezel. Had... The bezels. The bezel. There's like twice as much bezel as there is screen. Like you could if you fold it all the way down you could just use it as a cutting board oh my god and it's, it's kind of deceiving it's like when the laptop's closed from the outside it probably looks like it's got a pretty sizable screen on it and then you flip it up and realize that you just got catfished by a laptop less than five pounds wow so light and 32,000 colors what color space is that sad rgb it's two lives mm -hmm. both a mobile machine and also in a duo dock Plug it in, it's your desktop machine with a full scale monitor. Top of the line power book. Pop and the line. For about how much money? Which we're saying these go out for about $3,000 now, fully equipped. Three. Okay, Rick, thank you very much. I want to go over here and join Galen. Galen, the question I have for you is as we heard before in the PC segment, what kind of hardware you want? Weirdest to need. flex really ever. What kind of software you're going to run? For the business end, there's several po programs everyone uses, and uh, Microsoft Word is one, Microsoft Excel is another. Quark Express and PageMaker, sort of our so presentations, competitors. desktop publishing, database, word processor, You've spreadsheet, the usual. All right, go through one at a time and show us what the demands on the hardware are of these applications. Okay. Yes. I'll start with Microsoft how Word, demanding the uh, is this? standard uh, word processing program. Uh, See how you slowly have it loaded. In your word processing. You have uh, fonts in your word processing. It's not just like a typewriter. So an important point is, even though this is a word processor, it's not a text thing. You've got a lot of graphics to process. Still going right. to chew up a lot of power. <laughs> It's not just a text thing. You've got a lot of graphics to process. Look at that. Look at that graphic. If they're worried about this, just, just wait till Clippy shows up. He's going to take you to the cleaners. <laughs> I can't. Uh, publishing is what the Mac is famous for, sure. and there's two big programs here. Eldest PageMaker is the one most people know about. Uh, Mac User is an example of a uh, publication that does use it to produce its mm -hmm. pages. And again, very graphics intensive, so it's going to take a lot of computation. Extremely. Power. The other one's some. <laughs> very graphics intensive. Extremely. Crazy. Bottom line, what we've heard all day long is to decide if you want to decide what hardware to buy, you've got to decide what software you're going to use and what hardware do you need to support. That's right. That. I also say get a little bit more than you think you might need because you're going to grow. So buy now and benefit later. That's right, still sage advice. That's our guide to buying a new computer. Oh, Stay it's tuned over. For this week's computer no. news on Random Access. On Random Access, the obligatory eight cheesy 80s title for whatever the heck that was. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Quick restart. Auto resume, pick of the week. Auto resume utility that turns on PC at last Windows screen. So this is basically an application that puts your computer to sleep. Before the sleep feature was a part of Windows, they had a, a dedicated software for it. Nice. You guys can check out this this full video uh, if you want in the description below. I'll put it down there. But I just wanted to give you guys a trip down memory lane, show you this amazing episode. I thought it was really amusing, entertaining, fascinating, um, and, uh, and and pretty funny as well. So if you guys enjoyed it, please toss a like before you head out and subscribe to the channel for more tech content and stupid videos like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good one, and we'll see you in the next one.